welcome to coding friday guys so in this tutorial we'll see what is etag what is concurrency problem and how we can you know resolve this problem and believe me this is going to be very interesting session because i'll be doing everything practically so just one thing before i continue i just want to tell you that these are the videos we have already created in what we have seen what is no sequel what is cosmos tv how you can you know create collection and documents with the with the portal as well as with the dotnet core application so i have uh, shared my code in the github as well so we are just continuing ahead with the next example the e tag one okay so let me just first of all open the uh, presentation in what I'll explain yeah, what is ETEC. So just two things I'll cover very quickly. Uh, we'll see what is concurrency and then what is ETEC and we'll see with the live demo. So let's understand what is concurrency in real scenario. Okay, let's say uh, in your application there is one user who requested to the server to get some data. And let's say it request for the some unique number and your server returns the 50 let's say uh, the the current value of that data now you have a one logic that you want unique id to be plus one that means you fetch 50 and you want to save in the database after adding one into this the example uh, the output should be 51 and it gets saved in the in the database so this is the real uh, this is the real scenario uh, where one user is requesting data it is fetching uh, from the database and it's saving but let's say you have a multiple users here yeah so in the multiple users you have two users they requested for some amount and the current value in the DB was 50 and that is why uh, the response was 50 to each user and then after uh, the first user added the logic unique id equals to unique id plus one at the same time another user also added this logic now the thing is uh, in real scenario in a very quick time in a very quick time let's say before this first user request post request get saved the database with the amount of 51 the another user which is a second user his value uh, you know uh, processed with this logic and implement incremented with the 51 and get saved in the database now in ideal scenario since the id since the value of 50 uh, is changed to the 51 now the latest value should be the 51 for the first user and the output should be 52 but what gonna happen it would store the incorrect value 51 because we are not fetching the refresh or the updated data in the uh, from the database and that this this happens with the with the multiple users when they are interacting and this is just one example where i'm trying to explain with the simplest one with a unique id but there are cases where any any of the column is getting updated so you might face that the concurrency problem actually it should store this 50 to in the database so how we can achieve this we'll see with the practical demo so to do the, the practical demo uh, in the previous we have you know uh, created the uh, one cosmos uh, db uh, cosmos application in what we done the crud operation now to uh, implement this practically i have you know created two instances uh, one is the uh, one is for, with the one user and another with the second user so let's start with the with the first user Let's say this is my first application and this is my first user. What I want to store Chandra and Varyani, let's update this to 50 as I discussed and click on this send button. Come here, just ignore the commented code. So this is the ID, I'm providing the ID. That means um, that means the document I'm asking uh, to update, not to, to create. So what it gonna do, it will update this. Let's check in the database. Let me get rid of this pointer and refresh this. We should have the 51 value in the DB. Heavier. You can see we have the 51. That was the idle case. Let's come back here. Run through. Go to your postman once again and maybe this time let it be 50 uh, or maybe you can make it 55 and the output should be 56 and what you do you make a pause here since we cannot you know uh, reproduce or produce this scenario uh, without the debugger so i'm putting the debugger there uh, i have added the debugger here so i'm going to stop this and let's say this is our second user the port is different and it also receives the data from the server which is 55 and clicks on the send button now again the unique number is 56 
Now in the first user, you all will also see the unique number is 56. Now let's say it saves the data in the DB. Let's check in the database. It is 56. Now the first user tries to update the data. Now ideally it should be 57, right? Because 56 entry has already been made by the another user. But you would see it has not done anything also has a 56 56 maybe this is the id which uh, you are getting and then based on this id you are making another entry in the table uh, thinking that this is a unique id right but this this is gonna mess up because you have two uh, records of, of the 56 now how we can get uh, get rid of this important thing which you would notice here let me just uh, first of all run this and remove this debugger and let's go to the user let's update this the interesting thing to notice here, this e property. So this is 05004B69. Just click on this update. Now you would see this 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 has updated. So we have just requested to update the data first name and the last name and the unique number, but it also updated the e tag. So e tag basically is the by default property generated by the document, and it gets updated each time automatically when any of your uh, column is getting updated. So this is the property we can make use of. Uh, to handle the concurrency issue how to do so the first thing is you have to create the etec property in your model so in our case our model is user let's come here let's create a property and name it etec which is the type of string copy this and paste it in the another one as well as well since we have two accounts open here so we have to copy the code in the two accounts so this is the e tag property now this e tag property needs to be passed from here as well and remember this is case sensitive so id let's say we have in our case this perfect this is id and same, we have to pass from here as well. Okay, so you can say when you are getting the request, when you are you know fetching at the first time, so user receives this data as well as this e tag as well. So this is common in the board. Now let's uh, go back to our Cosmos controller, create document. Uh, here we are. So here's the logic we have, you have to add. The logic is nothing. Basically, this is the request option. You can uh, have any number of restrictions or any number of validation or what you want to add for your, uh, uh, your, your database or your collection. You can add it here. So one of them was the access condition. So what it is saying that use this e tag property, which exists in the user info and the type is if match. So they are two one if match and if not match. So we are going to use this if match. And then you have to pass this as a third parameter like this requesting option so what it gonna do it will validate based on the e tag if the match the update will be successful else it will throw the error so let's do the same code in the already pasted just to do not have or just to avoid the syntax problems so we are passing this request option so this is not the only thing uh, with the e tag as i said that the other sort of validation such as a partition key and we'll see in the later part uh, these all can be added to the request option and we can pass it using this so now let's run this application also let's run this application too okay we have running instance, we have running instance and come back here. So this is the e tag property and this is the e tag property. Now let's say try with the 60. Click on the send button. I think we have already have a debugger. This is our first user. Now the unique number is 61. That's okay. We have the request option available here. Now let's try to save this before uh, actually try to save this let's come back come back here and this is our second user and this is 60 so make it 60 click on this send remember this is our second user the first user is just on hold here 
So it has to save. And you see, we have the true result. That means in the database, we should have the updated value should be 61 we have the 61 now since uh, we have the update in the unique number the uh, e tag value just a second the e tag value is updated but we do not have the updated value here so we should ideally have the exception here we are operation cannot be performed because one of the specified precondition is not met. So the specific reason is that other user at the same time has updated the document. So it says either fetch the record from the database or throw the error. So there, there are two uh, things which you could uh, do. One thing is that directly you can show the uh, error to the user, uh, depending on your, uh, you know, uh, what sort of uh, logic you're dealing with, you can show the error exactly to the user. Other solution is you can retry this. So what you can do, the entire code of generating of the unique number you can put in the retry. So the document provides you the, uh, you know, some sort of functionality in what you can fetch the data uh, from the uh, database once again and retry uh, multiple times till the time you get the, uh, you know, success. So this is second option. So based on your uh, uh, solution or your requirement, you can opt any of the any of the approach. So that's all uh, from the e tech. Uh, Thanks for watching this video and once again we have the link in the description you can make use of this. Thanks for watching this.